right, welcome to this session on Babylonian arithmetic, where we've done some addition, and we've done some subtraction, and next and last, we have to do some multiplication. But first, let's just review uh, the decimal system and the method for multiplication, because the method is not going to change. So let's take, for example, 157 times 5, for example. Our classic method is to go right to left to say, okay, 5 multiply 7 gets me 35. Then the 5 is written here in the 35 and a 3 up at the top. Then 5 times the 5 in the tens column is 25, plus this 3 is 28. So the 8 goes here and the 2 at the top. Then I'm going to go 5 times 1, which is 5, plus that 2, which is 7, for my final answer. Now, that's all good and well if I want to just do it fast for myself to get the answer. But in terms of seeing what the detail, what I'm doing, or explaining it to someone else, it's not as convenient. So, the alternative, which is the same method, is to just break it down and show a little more detail. Sorry, not plus, we're multiplying with the same one here. So for the longer method, I'm going to take 5 times 7, so this one first, which is 35, and I'm going to write my 35 there. Then I'm going to do 5 times the tens column, which puts my answer over here. So I'm going to pad that with a 0, so I start in the right position. And then 5 times 5 is 25. It's not really 5 times 5. It's 5 times 5. 5 groups of 10, which is 25 groups of 10, which is why it starts in the tens column. Then I'm going to go 5 times 1, which is 500, and I add all those together, left to right, right to left. Regardless, you get the same number, it's the same method. So this right, more detailed version is perhaps preferred if you want to be more careful, avoid little mistakes, the more you write down, the less you have to keep track of in your head. So we'll stick to this more detailed method as we go to the Babylonian numbers. So we're looking at exercise 6.7, um, part A first. Now the first part of my, the first step in my method is to line things up. Not that we're going to make that second number super complicated, but I want to, just like the other methods, line things up carefully. So I have 13, and then I have 49, 49, and then I have 12, and I'm going to multiply by 5. We'll keep that second number nice and small so that we can focus on the method and not get caught up in too much uh, mental arithmetic. The goal here, remember, is to, just like before, in all the arithmetic, stay in the number system. Stay in the number system. But if you struggle with that, uh, initially, perhaps write stuff down in, in the, on the side here if you need to in the beginning. So we're going to say 5 times 12. Well, 5 times 12 is 60, but I'm working in groups of 60. So that's one group of 60 and nothing else. That was this multiplication. Now I'm going to go to multiplication with the second column. So I'm going to start in this second column. So I'm going to pad it with an empty space to get me in the right position. 
And in that way, I can think of this as ones. So five times 49. So mental arithmetic is good to practice here. Five times 49, well, five times 40 is 200. And 5 times 9 is 45, so 245. Now, to help you, I'll write it on the side here, 245. But know that if you write a test on this, you're not allowed to do that. Just to have something to see. You should ideally see this uh, in your mind. Now, this is way too much because any place can only go up to 59. So what do we do? We have to split this up into groups of 60. 240 is how high I can get with four groups of 60. And then I have five left over. Now I'm going to multiply to the third column. So I'm going to pad with empty place symbols to help things line up correctly. And then I have five times 13. Five times 13, or well, five times 10 is 50. 5 times 3 is 15, so 65. 65, oh, right over here, so we can visualize it. If you need the help in the beginning, it's too much. I can only go up to 59. So, I'll go one group of 60 and five left over. So, these are the pieces of my multiplication answer that I have to add together. And the nice thing is that the addition here um, isn't too complicated. Very rarely will I have something to carry over. I'm pretty much just merging these guys. 4 plus 5 is 9. Write your 9 little 1 symbols. And then another 1 there. And there is my answer. So some things to do in terms of a little more mental arithmetic and conversion perhaps. But the more I write down, the easier it becomes to keep track of everything. Let's try the B question. B question has 20... Sorry, that should be a little tighter, right? 25. And then I have 11. Let's have a prettier one symbol there. And then I have a five in the ones position. And I'm multiplying this time by seven. I'm going to keep that second number fairly small. Certainly not worried about double digit multiplication at this stage. All right, so seven times five is 35, and that can certainly fit in. 35. I can go up to 59, so that's more than enough space. Then I go to my second column, padded with an empty symbol to get me in line. 5, no, not 5, this is 7. 7 times 11. A 77, that's too big. So see the 77, don't write the 77. 77 is one group of 60, and 17 left over. Then I'm going to go to my third position. So I'm going to pad it with empty place symbols, which you can see as zeros, to get me in position. Five. Well, I keep saying five. I'm thinking of the previous example. This is seven times 25. Seven times 25. Well, seven times 20 is 140. Seven times five is 35. So I get, uh, perhaps you're struggling with the mental arithmetic. Uh, that comes with practice, so let's write that down a little bit on the side. Remember that you can't actually do that. We're doing 7 times 25, so that's 140, covering the 20s. Mental arithmetic is more efficient if I go left to right. And 7 times 5 
which is 35 for a total of 175. But that's way too big for my 60s spacing. So I have to break that into groups of 60. That'll be almost three groups of 60, not quite. Two groups of 60 to make 120 plus 55. So two groups of 60 plus 55. Five, six there. So it takes a little practice perhaps to get the mental arithmetic side of this. But it's very good to practice that. So then I add up. This just stays 35. 35. This just comes down as 17. And this becomes 56. That's only 4. 5 there. 56. And then the 2. I have nice spaces here so you can see the answer very clearly. And we're done with another one. The method is exactly the same as if you did it in decimals. Let's go one more. Uh, where's it? I'm looking for an empty page. There we go. Let's do number C. We have 15. Fif whoopsie, 15 there. And then 20. And then another 20 times, uh, we're going to go 10 this time. In Babylonian, that is a single digit number and easy to do with mental arithmetic. So I have 10 times the first 20 there. That's 200. 200 is too big. 200 will be three groups of 60, accounting for 180 and 20 left. Then I'm going to go to the second column. So I'm padding with some empty place symbols to put me in position. 10 times 20 again is 200. That's three groups of 60 relative to that column and 20 left. Then I'm going to go to the third column and I'm going to pad it with two empty places to get me in position. 10 times 15 is 150. 150 will be two groups of 60 using 120 and 30 left. So 10 is actually um, much easier to work with because I'm, used, I'm doing the mental arithmetic in decimals, of course, in my head. Then I'm adding to get right to left 20. Here I get 23. Here I get 33, and here I get a 2. So I'm staying in the Babylonian number system. I don't convert to decimal, then do the multiplication, then convert back. We stay in the number system so we can focus and really highlight the method that we're using. That is all for now. See you next time. Please remember to click the like button if you enjoyed the video and to subscribe if you want to be notified of more videos. Also, uh, please visit me on my Patreon page if you want to support me in making further content. Thank you.